everyone, and welcome back to Chem Talk. Today we'll be covering constitutional isomers, a common organic chemistry topic. We'll talk about what defines a constitutional isomer, practice identifying them from skeletal structures, and show the relevance of the topic to medicine. To start, it's essential to define an isomer to grasp what a constitutional isomer would be. Isomers are different, distinct molecules that have the same molecular formula, for example, C3H8 or C4H10. The types of isomers can be differentiated by how exactly the two molecules differ from one another. There are two broad types of isomers, constitutional and stereo. Stereo isomers differ spatially, but we'll dive deeper into those in a separate video. If two molecules have the same molecular formula but differ in the way their atoms are connected or bonded, i.e. their constitution, then they are considered constitutional isomers. Constitutional isomers are occasionally called structural isomers because the two molecules differ in their atomic structures. These differences in atomic bonding can yield different physical properties too. Take butane and isobutane as an example. Butane and isobutane both contain four carbon atoms and 10 hydrogen atoms. However, a quick search for their physical properties shows immediate differences. The boiling point of isobutane is negative 11.5 degrees Celsius, whereas butane's boiling point is negative 0.5 degrees Celsius. In future lessons, you will learn the reason behind this variance in boiling points, but it's clear that this difference has something to do with their atom connectivity. Now let's look at some more extensive examples of constitutional isomers and how to identify if two or more molecules are constitutional isomers of one another. Example one, we have 2,4-dimethyloctane and 3-methylnonane. First and foremost, it's important to determine the molecular formula for both molecules. You can do so by counting the number of carbons and hydrogens that are present. A quick count of the carbon atoms and hydrogen atoms in the structures shows that both molecules have a molecular formula of C10H22. When examining the molecules, though, it can be seen that the atom-to-atom -atom connectivity differs between them. 2,4-dimethyloctane has two methyl substituents, or branches, bound to an eight-carbon long chain, and 3-methylnonane has one methyl substituent or branch bound to a nine-carbon long chain. Because there are two unique molecules with identical molecular formula that only differ based on their connectivity, they are constitutional isomers. Example two, there we have one hexanol versus dipropyl ether. Looking at the skeletal structures of the two, a molecular formula of C6H14O can be deduced. It's quite obvious that the atomic structures of the molecules are different because of the location of the carbon-oxygen bonds. Thus, these are constitutional isomers. In some instances, like in the example we just worked on, constitutional isomers can contain different functional groups. Here, one hexanol is an alcohol with a hydroxy group, and dipropyl ether is an ether with an alkoxy group. A great way of distinguishing constitutional isomers is finding different functional groups, such as what we just did. Now with some practice under your belt, try to determine if the following molecules are constitutional isomers. Pause the video until you are ready to check your answer. In example one, we have propanoic acid versus propyl methanoate. Sometimes it can be helpful to draw the Lewis structure for the molecules you are given because skeletal structures can be difficult to decipher. Here, if we draw the Lewis structure for propanoic acid, we can see that it has three carbons, six hydrogens, and two oxygens. Doing the same for propyl methanoate, you can count four carbons, eight hydrogens, and two oxygens. Thus, their molecular formulas are different, meaning they cannot be constitutional isomers. Example two, propanol versus propanone. These molecules are constitutional isomers. If you began with finding the molecular formula for both, you'd see that they are identical, C3H6O. The atom to atom connectivity of the two molecules does differ though. The carbonyl groups are located at different positions. Therefore, 
the atom to atom connectivity is different and they're constitutional isomers. Finally, let's look at a real life example of constitutional isomerism. N-fluorine, otherwise known as 2-chloro-112, trifluoroethyl difluoromethyl ether, and isofluorine, 1-chloro-222 trifluoroethyl difluoromethyl ether. You can see why we call them by these layman terms because the IUPAC name is very long. Are two compounds shown below that can be used as inhaled anesthetics for procedures requiring general anesthesia. And fluorine was first synthesized in 1963 and was a widely used inhalation for general anesthesia from FDA approval in the 1960s through the 1980s. However, and fluorine demonstrated negative effects on the kidneys and stimulated convulsions or seizures in some patients. So it was mostly discontinued in favor of isofluorine, which was proven safer for patients due to fewer negative side effects. And fluorine and isofluorine have the same molecular formula. However, their atomic structures differ in the connectivity of their halogenated ethyl groups. Therefore, the two are constitutional isomers. This is a great illustration of the power that simple differences in atomic connectivity can yield. Changing the atomic structure of a drug can create a new medication that is safer for patients and more universal, which means it can be used on patients with kidney illness, illnesses and diseases and patients prone to convulsions. Isomerism comes up frequently in pharmaceutical medicine, so understanding the concepts is incredibly important to professionals in this field. So yes, orgo is applicable outside of the lecture hall and exams. To summarize what we just went over. One, a group of molecules can be isomers if they share the same molecular formula but are totally unique, meaning they differ spatially, structurally, etc. Two, constitutional isomers have the same molecular formula but differ in the way their atoms are connected or bonded to one another. Three, Constitutional isomers can have different physical properties such as melting points, boiling points, density, etc. Four, when trying to determine if molecules are constitutional isomers, a great first step is to identify if they have the same molecular formula. That's all we have today for constitutional isomers. For more practice on the subject, other organic chemistry topics, or chemistry fun in general, please visit www.chemistrytalk.org.